Welcome back to the Super Coach Nuff channel. In this video, we're going to review week six of the NFL Dream Team season. Um, and so, a slightly better week for us this week. Still nothing spectacular, but a 459, um, which was not even top 20% of the round. But uh, we did see a red arrow, which I think is the first time almost this season. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're still in the second half of the table. Um, but we are inside the top 2,000, so we'll take that. Uh, and also a league win, which I think might be our first for the season. Um, I'll have to have a look, but I don't remember. <laughs> I know it just hasn't been a great season. But uh, we'll load the team up, and I guess, you know, despite being a green arrow, despite getting the league win, as I said, there was still some room for improvement. Uh, and I guess one of those areas is at quarterback where we did captain Jalen Hurts and 43 was a great score. Um, but we did bench Josh Allen who scored a 48. And um, we also have Daniels who scored a 41. So he's been awesome for cash gen. Um, I guess Caleb Williams has started a fire now too. So it's probably a situation where, you know, Daniels is looking, you know, possible keeper in the position. So I think, you know, we do have to find a way out of uh, the three quarterbacks. Um, I think, you know, particularly Daniels, you know, still has a decent break even. Um, and against Carolina is a nice matchup this week. So definitely a hold this week. Um, and then I guess we'll reassess. Um, but our running backs, you know, there's a bit of room for improvement there. Saquon with just the 12 points. So after his hot start, he's gone a bit cold. Kamara with the 29 is solid. Uh, Bijan had a good game with 48, um, but Jordan Mason scored 16 and got himself injured. So might be one to, to cash out this week. Uh, on our bench, Bucky Irving doing the business with 34, so obviously having him in the team would have helped. Uh, and Tank Bigsby didn't back up his massive score last week, but again, uh, we just brought him in for a bit of cash and generation. Our wide receivers, so a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I guess the good stuff being Godwin getting 60 points, two touchdowns, Garrett Wilson 41 today. But uh, Neighbours missed out again, and also Marvin Harrison Jr. missed. I'm not sure what that was about. I'll have to go and have a bit of a look at the uh, the news updates. Um, but you know, considering we were two players down to get uh, 459 was good, but obviously... You know, we've definitely left a 500 uh, bag uh, for the taking. Uh, Ladd McConkey with 12, you know, we'll take that. Jefferson was on by. Uh, Cup, hopefully back from injury soon. Uh, tight ends, so we had Laporta and Bowers both scoring a 23 um, with Kelsey on the buy this week. That made the decision easy. Um, I guess Bates as well. 38 points in that monster win against the Cowboys was nice to see. Uh, and Washington have been quite good recently, uh, defensively speaking, but uh, only six points this week. So let's have a look at the, the game day. If we can load it up. So, yeah, what's that? 68 point, no, 66 point win over the shot callers. And given that I'm ranked 19th, I think it's fair to say that is my first win this season. Either that or we've got a ridiculously even competition. <laughs> but uh, for the shot callers, Michael's team, uh, he captain Lamar. So I guess probably the first time this season I've uh, outscored Lamar with my captain, I reckon. He's been really good. Derek Henry with 50 was nice. So... Obviously not looping there with uh, the two Baltimore Baltimore assets. Um, had Bates as an emergency, which was handy. Rogers with 37 was quite good, but uh, I think possibly also missed out on Harrison and Neighbours. And also the Miami guys on by, um, Kansas City on by. So it was caught out a bit at wide receiver also this week, which probably did not help things. 
Um, but looking through the league, we've got a 502 from the Beard 82. So, and not again missing players from the team. So, had Daniels as captain, had Godwin, Mayfield with 57. Nice point of difference the way he's going this season. David Montgomery with 41 is a great return. Uh, Kyle Pitts with 17. Got a, got a bit there. Um, and then, I guess having the kicker on the bench for 38 points is a bit stiff. Who's his kicker? Oh, Narvison with 22. That's not the worst. Um, but, yeah, 502 despite, I guess, another one in the, the Malik Neighbors boat. Nico Collins uh, not playing as well due to injury. Probably could have been traded, I would have thought. Um, two girls, one cup. Two girls, one cup, I should say, 493. But uh, cut my ball, sitting first in the league. Uh, and a 519, which is a fantastic result. Uh, I think that's the highest I've seen in the league. So well done, Jamie. But uh, Captain Hurts as well, my guy. AJ Brown with 41, so the, the Philly stack doing the business. Bijan Robinson, he had he had Bates, had Garrett Wilson. Brees Hall with a 38, so that's a nice uptick for him. I uh, don't think that was enough to win me my... Uh, my uh, Draft league head to head, but that's okay. So Caleb Williams is at fifty nine. So yeah, definitely a mistake to trade him early. Oh yay of little faith. <laughs> so five nineteen, despite having that on your bench, is pretty nice. Uh, but I guess in terms of moves this week, actually we'll have a quick look at the the leagues. And the overall, so we've got uh, cut my balls and hard Brock life both five and one. Um, the bin chickens down to four and two. So I guess that was the one I was actually more interested in. But uh, yes, finally off the the basement. So Buck thirteen bears must have got a win this week too. Elevating above. Go pack. Go ten. But uh, in terms of total points. So the bin chickens have slid a bit. They were number one a couple of weeks ago, but uh, you know still around the top 100. Jamie making a nice move up into the top 200 as well, which is fantastic. Uh, Beard 82, obviously off the back of a 500 pushing up in the overall. Shane's in the top 300 along with the TD inspectors. Inspector, I should say, Glenn. Timmy's caddy. The reigning champ in the top 300 as well. Uh, champ for the league, not overall. <laughs> Unless, I don't know, did you do all right last all right last year, Chris? I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, then, yeah, way down here in 18th. So, uh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> Good one to win from here, I suppose. Uh, speaking of which, the plan for this week. So it looks like we're only missing C.D. Lamb on the buy this week. So good position to be in in terms of players. Um, it's probably more just injuries and, and chasing any, I guess, value. So something I probably should do, and I thought about doing this before, but then I thought I'll do it on camera. So... Um, I guess we can discuss it a bit more. But, uh, oh, what happened there? I wanted to go to players. Uh, and that's just going through my watch list to see how we've gone. I haven't followed it too closely, if I'm being honest. But uh, did sort of have a few players that I was interested in. Um, so I guess number one, Jaden Daniels. Number two, Caleb Williams. Obviously both great options. Highly owned. But, again, I got a bit... Uh, uh, Gun shy with Caleb Williams' slow start, but you can see his three-week average of 42 is up there. He's making a lot of cash, negative 24 break-even. Um, I don't think we need to have these guys on the watch list anymore. We know what they're about, so I'm just going to take them off the watch list. Probably the uh, – put him back on, I think, by mistake. But, uh, you know, D Daniels is in that keeper conversation. Uh, Bo Nix was another one. If you used him, he's done pretty well. Made 8 mil, nice negative break-even. Starting to find it at the level. 
Uh, Jordan Mason was a good get, you know, particularly with McCaffrey's injury. Um, but with his break-even and that injury he's carrying, he is probably on the chopping block this week. Sam Darnold's another one who's done quite well. Um, you know, doesn't have the, the nicest break-even, um, but, you know, that was one down week. Um, the Vikings have been going pretty good, 5-0. and zero. Good. Uh, should be an interesting one this week against the Lions, but uh, not much use for my team anymore. Malik Neighbors, obviously another one that we're, we're all on and he's continuing to do well, so no need to worry there. Alan Lazard had a couple of freak catches today, the Hail Mary, and then there was another one where it looked for all money Aaron Rodgers had hit the defender in the arse and, and sure enough it glided past his hip and Lazard uh, absolutely swallowed it. So he'd be a bit of a mid-price option. I don't know how much more cash he's got in him. At his, you know, start price of five mil, represented pretty good value. So I might just leave him. We'll continue to monitor. Brian Thomas has made a bit of cash, but you know, starting to top out in price. Um, Chase Brown, you know, has made some good money as a running back. We sort of haven't found the best running backs other than Mason and probably now Bucky Irving. But uh, I'm going to take Chase Brown off my watch list. Brock Bowers. You know, it's been quite good when uh, tight ends in general have struggled. Nice break even still, so we will keep him. And we don't need to watch him too much anymore. Uh, Marvin Harrison, you know, keeper. Like I said, not too sure what happened there. I will chase that up, um, but uh, no longer needed on the watch list. Rico Dowdle's actually gone okay. I thought he was a bit of a flop, but uh, it's just pretty inconsistent. You know, a couple of big games, particularly week five. So, again, when we got out on a bit too early, we could have had that extra 4K. But um, maybe one more week, and then uh, you could flip him. Bucky Irving, I think, still got a little bit of juice, but uh, you're already $4 million more expensive than what he was at the start. But I've got him and... You know, I don't need to worry about keeping an eye on him. Xavier Worthy is one I'm probably looking to bring in this week. Negative 10 break even. Rushy Rice out. They seem to sort of be able to use him in a couple of different scenarios. Obviously, he has a wide receiver. But he does also have some, you know, those sweep running plays where he's just too quick for everyone. So, um, yeah, I'll keep him on the watch list, but basically I'll trade him in this week. And then he'll probably come off the watch list. Actually, I'm committing to it early, but uh, Xavier Worthy off the watch list. <laughs> Tank Bigsby, we sort of had him highlighted as a bit of an option. You know, he made that, that big jump last week, so it's probably a bit too late to get on now. Despite the break even, that's only going to last one more game. So he's on the, uh, the chopping block next week. Uh, Lad McConkey, we've brought in a bit of a slow burn. But, uh, you know, the Chargers don't have too many more options at uh, wide receiver. So, I mean, we'll keep him and we don't need to keep an eye on him anymore. Tyron Trace is an interesting one. You know, had a couple of good weeks now with the 26 and the 39. Um, so, I think, you know, it could potentially start uh, becoming the running back at the Giants. They've got Singletary, who is a bit older and a bit more experienced. But... Uh, there was some wraps on this kid going in. So he could be the one that we trade Mason down to this week. You know, negative 29 break even is pretty nice. Um, not sure if the matchup against the Eagles is the best, but, uh, you know, the Eagles haven't been the, the best defensively by any stretch. So definitely one to, to keep. Uh, Pat, Pat Frymuth, you know, he's made a bit of money, but, you know, not really much value there. I think there's better options. Um, Roman Dunze on the buy this week. Um, you know, it looks like things are going well at uh, the Chicago uh, Bears, but uh, you know, oh, we'll keep him on. I don't know if there's you know a lot more value there, but uh, we'll keep him on because he's on buy. Xavier Leggett seems to be sort of getting integrated more, but again, a bit inconsistent with his scoring. Um, probably, you know, not enough value there for me to maintain interest. Um, 
Coleman looked looked okay today from what I saw. I didn't see the whole game, if I'm being honest, but um, did see him get a, featured a couple of times. Um, it looks like they're sort of leaning towards Shakir more as the number one, so um, I'm going to just take him off the list. Braylon Allen looked like he was getting a bit of usage at the start of the year, but that has waned off. Don't know if they were just trying to get Brees Hall up and running. Um, but also now with the change of coaches, you know, it might just be that Brees Hall gets featured a bit more. So um, take Allen off the list. Ray Davis is an interesting one. Um, yeah, so has made a bit of money this week, given uh, he's 33. Um, and with James Cook out injured, could be one if you need like a near bottom dollar option. So we'll keep him on the watch list. No offense. Um, I saw someone just before had him. He's been okay, you know, compared to how rubbish some of the tight ends have been. Um, but, uh, yeah, not interested. Pretty happy with the tight ends I've got. So Gesicki probably can come off the watch list too. Parkinson is an interesting one. Um Averaging 10, so I don't know how his price is so low. He must have started... Yeah, it didn't start that low. Just had, I guess, a pretty quiet one to start. Scored very little in week two. I can't even see it. That's how little it was. But has picked up the last couple of weeks and then coming off... <coughs> excuse me, the buy. So I might keep an eye on him in case... A tight end goes down injured. Drake May getting his first full start. So I guess if you are looking to downgrade, you know, one of those cheapies this week, Williams, Daniels, they've both got great break even, so probably not worth it. But, um, yeah, May is, a, is an interesting option, about to uh, go up in price. And against the, the Jags as well, it's a pretty decent matchup. Uh, Jalen Polk. Doesn't seem to have quite worked out. He had one big game, and even then, that was only a 16. Um, so we can take him off the watch list. I don't think he's much used to us. Uh, Devon Velle might be an interesting one. He played his second game this week. Has a break even. I think that's pretty much bottom dollar at 3.4 mil. So one person has gone it. I would love to see that. But... Um, yeah, I guess one will we'll continue to monitor. Uh, Theo Johnson, a bit of a slow burn by the looks of it. Had a big game, or well, relatively big game, with 14. And then what was it this week? Uh, nine points this week. So I guess cheap at the price. Um, but again, probably more keen on Parkinson. Rattler's an interesting one. Got his first game with... Uh, Derek Carr out injured and scored a 28. So obviously you can sit and wait a week, but next week could be the week to, you know, downgrade a cheapie. And uh, he is right on that bubble. So that would be really nice timing. Um, Zemir White hasn't really worked out as the option we thought he would be. So I'll get rid of him. Uh, McMillan, wide receiver at Tampa Bay. Don't really remember why I even had him on the list, but uh, hasn't featured recently, so he can go. Jalen Wright is an interesting one, so fairly cheap, but does have negative break even. Um, probably just need to look at the injury reports. A Chan, Raheem Mostert, if they're both out, then uh, this guy could feature a bit. So we'll keep him on the watch list. Adonai Mitchell's, you know, averaging five points. So I had one big game, and I said big game, it was 12. Can probably remove him. Kamani Vidal's an interesting one. Played his first game, got 24. So definitely one to keep on the watch list, and, uh, you know, could be an option, downgrade option next week. Trey Benson. Slow burning it has dropped 150k, so 3.3 must be baseline. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens if James Connor got injured. So for that reason, I'm just going to keep him on my watch list. 
Uh, Oliver hasn't really featured, so he can go. Blake Corum. Um, I guess there's a bit of chat that he might get more involved off the back of the bye. You know, he's had a couple of goes now, um, scoring a five and a seven. So probably one you can even have a look at this week. And if he does get more involved um, against a team like the Raiders that, uh, you know, aren't the strongest in the league, then uh, definitely one on our radar for next week. Uh, Estime sort of has only just had a second game this week. So might be one just to continue watching. Uh, Lloyd, I think, has been injured. Was it? Yeah, so from week two, he got a run, and then that's it. So might just get rid of him. But uh, if we hear something about Josh Jacobs and he sounds like he's in the mix, we'll throw him back in. Penix, it just depends on an injury to Kirk Cousins. Trey Lance is an interesting one with, uh, you know, the Cowboys struggling. Do they go, uh, you know, a bit of a point of difference and uh, you go the dual threat option? Jonathan Brooks, not too sure when he's due to return, but he's still very firmly on the watch list. Uh, and then Ben Sinott hasn't uh, picked up the spot that I thought he would there at Washington, so we can get rid of him. So slightly updated uh, watch list there with some of the cheapies. You know, Alan Lazard is probably not a cheapie, um, but we'll continue to monitor these guys. They could be potential options for different types of trades. Um, while we're here, we'll have a look at break-evens as well. Um, this video is going a bit longer than anticipated, but uh, yeah, I guess doing this mid-season monitoring. <laughs> sort of job. So Tyron Tracy is actually the cheap cheapy of the week in terms of break even, negative twenty nine. Um, so probably have to have a bit of a closer look at the uh, injury report with um, Singletary, but uh, you know, might just win the spot on merit, just having that upside. Drake May, if you're looking for a quarterback this week, offers great value. Um Vele as a cheap wide receiver if you're that way inclined. Um, Ray Davis is another nice option at running back. Um, in terms of wide receivers, there's not too much going on here. Might just filter out and see what we can do. Um, particularly, you know, if you've got the likes of Harrison Neighbors, you probably want to hold on. Oh, I'm still looking at my... No wonder. It's still the uh, watch list. So apologies there. Try that again. And I'll go back to everyone. That's better. So Malik Will is still number one. Sean Tucker is an interesting one. It's called 65. So, I mean, that's a two-week cash grab. Um, I don't think he, he actually did that much. It was just whatever he did was really good. So an interesting one. Juju Smith-Schuster at his price and with Rashi Rice out, that is very tempting. Um, might uh, yeah, engage with that a little bit more. Might put him on the old watch list. But probably with that negative 23 break even, and he's 33 last week, it's basically now or never, I would have thought. Um, after that, you know, we're still sitting pretty well with Bigsby Bates has sort of reset his cash gen. Garrett Wilson's making some money. Neighbours still got lots of money to make. No need to panic in there. Um... Rattler, as I said, is one probably for next week. A couple of interesting names there that I haven't heard of before. Uh, Hodge, Means, Whittington didn't play. So, you know, the bit of stab in the dark there with those. Xavier Worthy still in with a shout. Kamani Vidal, another one for next week. So there's a couple of nice downgrade options next week. Uh, Flowers sort of reset his uh, break even this week. After that, don't know if there's much to get too excited about. On the flip side, probably should look at the the cells. 
if it'll work. Um, <laughs> so Raheem Mostert, still not back. Saquon is about to lose some money, so if you wanted to to bank his three mil that he's made, potentially could. Uh, Dak Prescott on the wire, I would cut him if you have him. Um, Badgent. He's played two games and got zero, so he must just be coming in to take a knee. Um, HN, so again, depends on injury report, but uh, might be one you can let go and potentially even bring back in once his price bottoms are out. Kamara, another one like Saquon, if you uh, want to cash out. Kyron Williams, you know, probably will lose some value, but... Uh, you know, averaging 35, so similar to these other guys, he hasn't really made any money. So you, if you bought him in, you might as well hold. Um, Alave with a negative two, that's pretty yuck. Um, could probably find a better option, I would have thought. Some cheap, awesome quarterbacks that are just coming in for the junk time. Zach Moss, another one with a negative. Yeah, can get it out of him. Derrick Henry is a hold. Don't worry about the 50 break even. You can uh, get that as you can see from this week. Uh, and then the sort of elite quarterbacks. So we're starting to get more of the higher end options that are going to cost you money anyway. So no need to panic on, on those guys. All right, but that's a lot of chat. So just quickly with my team, as I said, um, I was interested in bringing Worthy, but the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking Smith, uh, Smith Schuster, and also um, a running back for Jordan Mason. And I've already forgotten who I said I was going to trade in there. So let's have a look. It'll probably remind me in a minute. And I look at uh, the, the scores or the break evens or something from this week. <laughs> uh, maybe we can base it on score. Uh, it wasn't Tucker, it was Tracy, that's the guy. So we'll bring him in. Gives us a bit of money, which is nice. We don't have to go cheap with the, uh, the wide receiver, but there is that nice bit of value there. So, I mean, who do we get rid of? What was McConkie's break even again? Negative three, it's okay. Um, yeah. Do we get rid of Lamb? Like, he's lost value already. He's going to continue to leak cash, but the Cowboys don't look any good. But at the same time, he is their main man, so. Maybe we just buy the bullet on the Lamb. Particularly with, you know, Neighbours and Harrison potentially in doubt. I'd like to have a bit more assurance around that. So the question is, which Kansas City Chief do we go? Uh, where are they? KC. So we've got... So I should have got my total points. So Xavier Worthy, Smith Schuster. So, you know, both looking good, both nice prices. I mean, the question is do we get both of them this week and really push the cash gen? We've still got three boosts up the sleeve. We don't have a great deal of trades. We'd only have 13, I think, if my maths is any good after this week. But, I mean,. Given how far back we are, we might have to be ultra-aggressive. So, I think, yeah, we don't need Cup anymore. We, and saying that, if I make these trades, I don't actually have any players on buy this week. So, it might just be if a Neighbours or Harrison is injured, that uh, the loop will come into it. But uh, let's have a look. That gives us a lot of money to play with. So seems a bit counterintuitive, but I mean, well, what's the alternative for these trades? If I go, 
Um, back to everyone. So let's look at average. But, you know, I've got quarterbacks. We could get Derrick Henry instead of Tracy. Uh, could load AJ Brown. So just re didn't realize uh, he only played two games. I know he was injured, but didn't realize it was that uh, serious. So, yeah, so played week one, and then he's just come back. So do we go AJ Brown? Would make sense, but I mean, if I'm looking at these three, honestly, I'll probably rate the Kansas City wide receivers over Tracy for the sort of medium term, which is what we want to look at for cash gen. Um, so who else are running back? Mixon isn't the most exciting. Uh, Nico Collins is injured. Lots of quarterbacks, obviously, and we're like I said, we're a bit overstacked at uh, quarterback. But uh, we will fix that next week. Um, Jonathan Taylor didn't play. Kyron Williams potentially is that slight more point of difference. What's on the ownership? Derek Henry's there, thirty-six percent. People are smart. That's why. <laughs> Um, Kyron Williams would be an interesting one at that 8% mark. David Montgomery had a good game, but there is the split workload there. Yeah, you know what? We've got the cash. We might as well use it. So let's bring in the king. King Henry, you know, that way we don't have to, you know, potentially muck around with like an Irving in the team for the week. Derrick Henry can uh, get us going. So, taking forever to reload. Oh, thought this would be nice and easy. <laughs> All right, but I guess the next thing is to look at matchups. So Thursday night football, New Orleans, Denver. So Kamara, VC, nice and easy. Captaincy options. So we've got Hertz against the Giants. Um, yeah, don't hate that as a matchup. It is at MetLife, but I know the Jets are good defensively. Not too sure about the other New York team. Washington and Carolina. So we could potentially captain Daniels. Buffalo against Tennessee. So, again, who sits out? Do we do we bench Allen again this week? Probably not. I think we go with the experience. So Daniels will go off this week, make us some more cash, and then we'll, we'll work out who to trade out next week. Um Running backs, that's all pretty straightforward. Wide receivers. So assuming everyone's good to go, because I honestly don't know. Um, Jefferson, Godwin, Wilson are locked. Neighbors and Harrison, if they're playing, are locked. So it would just come down to McConkey or the Kansas City guys against San Fran. It is a tough matchup, but uh, Kansas City goes all right. And the Charters... Don't play until Monday night against the Cardinals, who haven't been the strongest defensively either. But in saying that, I am probably leaning towards Worthy. Just has that upside, and I want to be a part of that. So <laughs> we'll lock him in. I think everyone else is okay just quickly. Uh, Jefferson is somewhere. Vikings at Detroit. It'll be a tough one, but... Um, Jefferson does it against them all. Godwin is up against Baltimore, so that's a tough one too. But uh, oh, so there's two Monday night games. Interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll go with Godwin. Um, Wilson against Pittsburgh, so solid defense. But Aaron Aaron Rodgers factor means that he will be a part of it. Um, yeah, like I said, happy with that. Tight ends, so conversation's starting to get a bit more interesting. 
now that uh, Laporte has found a bit and Kelsey has found a bit. Um, so the Raiders play the Rams. Not sure about the Rams' defense. So I can't remember off the top of my head. But I think, you know, we just go with the pr more proven guns. It's a bit hard to say that with Laporta, given we're going off one season. <laughs> um, kickers are interesting. You know, you think the Rams are potential scoring more touchdowns, which leads to more extra points. But I think the Detroit game could be a bit closer, which could lead to some more field goals. So I'm going to leave Bates. It's a toss of the coin there. Then obviously the Chiefs over Washington for the defense. Like San Fran does have a good offense. And Carolina, their, their offense is better than what it was to start the season, to be fair. But uh, we brought the Chiefs in, as I said, and forget. So we'll, we'll lock that in. So that's the, the team going into week seven. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to add them below this video. Uh, if you enjoy the NFL content, give us a like. Um, give us a subscribe for all the fantasy sports content, including the new NBA uh, season, which is going to kick off soon. Uh, just do a quick check to see if there's actually any spots. There's one spot left. So um, I'll just quickly flash the lead code. Um, one, oh sorry, nine one three four four one. So if you're interested, jump in on that. Um, but other than that, we'll catch it in the next one. <laughs>